Why does salt make everything taste better? It's sody, yum. Let's talk brewing salts. Welcome back, brewers and beer lovers of Flying Wombat TV, the channel all about beer, banter, and bloody good times. Today, we are talking about brewing salts, or water chemistry, whatever you want to call it. So as a quick intro to this, we're going to keep this video very short and sweet. If you want a full mega in-depth guide into all the things to do with actual water chemistry, we can do that for you at a later date. But this is a guide video to kind of get you started on the road to it. If you've always thought about starting with brewing salts, but you've never really taken the, the, the step to dive in, that's what this video is about. So starting first of all with water profiles. Generally speaking, there's four main profiles you need to consider. Home brewers are typically either using tap water, RO slash reverse osmosis slash filtered water, um, distilled water or spring slash bottled water. So as a quick guide between the four, tap water, easily available, pour it straight out of your sink, but you don't necessarily know what's in there. So the first critical step before you start mucking around with water chem is to get a water profile from your local city council. So you can just request that, they'll flick it out to you, and that will tell you how much magnesium's in there, how much sodium, how much chloride, how much calcium, all that kind of stuff. And from there, you can start building your water profiles. If you're using filtered slash RO water, you're basically starting with a pretty blank canvas. There might be some trace minerals left in there though, so it's worth getting your RO water tested the first time you use your RO device, just to try to get an actual idea of what is actually left after there, after you've passed it through the filter. Uh, spring water, very easy. That bottle of spring water should say on the back of the packet with whatever bottle you're getting it in, what is inside that water. So once again, that will give you your initial starting profile and you can build upon it from there. And lastly, distilled water is the actual blade canvas. That thing comes out completely neutral, which is why when you drink distilled water, it tastes flat and flabby. That's because there's no ions in there whatsoever. So with that, you're actually starting blank and you can build everything up from scratch. Now, let's start talking about the different salts. The six big players are calcium, magnesium, sodium, chloride, sulfate, and bicarbonate. Let's dive into number one. Calcium is a pretty basic one. Essentially, it helps with enzyme activity during mash in. Typically, you wanna aim for somewhere between 50 to 150 parts per million, not specific to any beer style, just rough guidelines. But if you use too much calcium, it can block yeast access to uh, magnesium. So you don't wanna go over that kind of rough threshold. Magnesium is critical for yeast health during fermentation. You wanna aim for somewhere between five to 15 parts per million. Again, not profile specific, but you don't wanna go with too much magnesium because it can add this astringency quality to beer if you go uh, too high on that. You don't want to, definitely don't want to exceed 50 parts per million. You want to be somewhere between five to 20. Uh, so you don't want that weird, you know, bitter tea bag flavor by going too hard on that one. Sodium doesn't have a massive, massive role to play as far as the other salts go. It kind of helps to sweeten the malt effect of beers depending on how it's used, but typically sodium is used with sodium bicarbonate to raise the pH of a mash. So if you've got, for example, a really dark stout with a lot of roasted malts increasing the acidity, you can use sodium bicarbonate to raise the pH to bring it back within the 5.2 to 5.6 threshold. And you typically don't want to use too much because it'll just taste salty. like seawater or brine because it's salt. Bicarbonate. Now this one again linked to sodium typically uses sodium bicarbonate is used to raise the pH of brewing water. Now typically you don't want to go more than 250 parts per million so somewhere between the range of 0 to 250. Bicarbonate is really primarily used for adjusting pH in uh, beers that need more alkalinity but if you do go too hard on the alkalinity you'll leave that taste inside the beer so it tastes kind of I don't know metallic and strange. It will lose the, the tartness that a beer needs to be fresh and crisp. Chloride. Now this is one of the big players in the brewing world. It's used to enhance malt sweetness and body to beers. So typically you want to be between zero to at the very maximum end around 250 parts per million for an extremely malty beer. And we'll come back to this in a second, but essentially you're playing with a ratio between chloride and sulfate. Just keep in mind, you go too much on the chloride, it's going to develop this weird chemical taste in your beer, like chlorine basically. Like imagine like a swimming pool. Too much of it is going to taste a bit like swimming pool water. Sulfate, another big player. 
This guy is working in the opposite direction to chloride. It's about enhancing bitterness and hoppiness to a beer. So if you're going for like a West Coast IPA, sulfate is your best friend. But you wanna keep a kind of balance going. You don't really wanna exceed 50 to 150 parts per million because you go way too much sulfate, you're gonna end up with a real bitter, just astringent bomb of a beer. So you're playing within that ratio and you're playing with the ratio between sulfate and chloride. But we'll come back to that in one in a second. This video is sponsored by CNC, aka Cyber News Center, your one-stop shop for all the latest news around the world of the cyberspace, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, cryptocurrency, etc. If it lives in the digital and online space, head over there for all the latest news about the latest hacks or just the big things going on. Back to the video. Let's talk sulfate to chloride ratios. Now, this is really the one takeaway that I really want all you guys to get from this video. The playing with these ratios is gonna affect the overall taste quality mouthfeel of your beer. If you're going for a very hoppy style that relies on that crispness, the freshness, if you want it to be a little dry and a little more tart and sharp on the tongue, go for a sulfate to chloride ratio that's higher on the sulfate. So maybe a two to one ratio of sulfate to chloride. If you're going for a more balanced beer, like say just a pale ale, you're probably gonna go for a one to one ratio. You don't need one to outcompete the other. However, if you're going for a very multi beer or for something like a Nipa, it's actually the reverse. You wanna go more chloride to sulfate. So start with say a 0.5 ratio, so one part sulfate to two parts chloride. Have a play with that and just find the balances that work for you. Now all that's said and done, you've played with your salt, you've got your water profile almost set, you like your sulfate to chloride ratio, something to consider is pH. You need to balance that stuff because after you've done a bunch of salt additions, it will, it can throw some things out and especially with your different malt profiles you're using, that can also change things. For example, stouts, a lot of roasted malts increase acidity, pale ales don't have that much acidity so you need to actually lower the pH. So, lactic acids and phosphoric acids are food grade acids that you can use to lower pH. So use a brewing calculator, we'll link stuff down below to do that. If you need to increase pH, you're using slaked lime or baking soda. Try to keep that range somewhere between 5.2 and 5.6 while you're mashing in. And you can also do a um, acid uh, sparge, by the way. So you can also acidify the sparge water to be in that same range so that you're keeping that pH consistent throughout the entire process. Measuring pH is critical if you're going to muck around with pH. So get yourself something like this, a pH meter. This one costs me from memory around 20, 25 bucks. They're not outrageously expensive and they're pretty easy to calibrate. You could also use pH strips if you really want to, which are super cheap and obviously extremely user friendly. However, they're not mega accurate. So if you actually want to be specific between point this and point that, you're better off getting a pH meter, but these will do the job if you're in a pinch. Now we know what ions we need, what salts we need, and we kind of know when to use them and why, but how do we actually get them in the beer? Well, we use different compounds. So they don't come individually as ions, they come as things like Epsom salts, for example. This is magnesium sulfate. So if you need to increase either magnesium or sulfate in your beer, this is your best friend, as well as a few other options. If we need to increase our calcium, we have calcium hydroxide, AKA slaked lime. Yeah, AKA slaked lime. So again, another compound that you can use to bump up the calcium levels in your brewing. Pickle crisp, my favorite name because it just sounds so, so silly, but this is calcium chloride. So again, need to increase the calcium or the chloride in your beer. This is really, really good. I use it in almost every single beer that I make now. It's going on my nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, lastly, gypsum, calcium sulfate. Yeah. Calcium sulfate, so again, about increasing the sulfate levels in your beer. The reason why you do have different options like magnesium sulfate than calcium sulfate, etc., is because you can't just use magnesium sulfate or your magnesium levels are gonna get too high. You can't just use calcium sulfate all the time or your calcium levels might get too high. So it's about doing a bit of a mix and match to find out what is the best amount of grams from each of these to add to get the right parts per million for your batch. More on how to do that in a second. So a quick talk about calculators. It is very hard to do this. You can do it manually, very hard to do the maths manually. So I recommend just using a calculator. There's plenty of free ones like Brewer's Friend or even Brewfather you can use for free. I recommend using either one of those two to get cracking into all of this stuff because it's just gonna make it so much easier. We're all past high school. We don't want to think to do maths anymore. Now let's run you through a couple of quick examples of the last few recipes I've done and how I've adjusted my water chemistry. So for the Christmas gingerbread imperial stout, link 
wherever that goes up there that we did for our last brew day, we used a water profile of calcium at 67 parts per million, magnesium at 13 parts per million, uh, sodium at 15 parts per million, chloride at 80 parts per million, sulfate at 40 parts per million, and um, bicarbonate at 139 parts per million. And that was because there was so much roasted malt in there, we really had to buffer it and increase the pH of our mash so that it wasn't too acidic and stripping all the tannins out of those malts. Now let's move more towards the middle as far as water profiles go. Australian Pale Ale. So my one is a fairly balanced profile, maybe slightly leaning more towards the phosphoric side of things to bring out that freshness and crispness. So my stats were calcium of 62 parts per million, magnesium at five parts, sodium at 15, chloride at 50, uh, sulfate at 101, so a two to one ratio of sulfate to chloride, and bicarbonate of 57 parts per million, as well as acid. I did use 1.6 mils of phosphoric acid in the mash. I'm not gonna talk about sparge stuff right now, but for the mash, just keep in mind that the mills of phosphoric acid is something you need to adjust for the actual batch size and the amount of water you're using in your recipe. Nipa, this guy is malty. Now, yes, it is an IPA, which would make you traditionally think, oh, more sulfate, but it's a malty-based beer to bring out the creaminess and the voluptuousness of the juicy style of that brew. So for that, I went with 128 parts per million calcium, nine parts per million magnesium, 39 sodium, 219 chloride, 130 sulfate, and zero on the bicarbonate. And did I use any acid on this one? I believe I did. 3.2 mils in the mash. Once again, adjust for your volumes. But does all this matter? Does salt matter? Yes and no. It's tricky. So there's no one right answer. You can make very, very good beers without brewing salt. I did it for years without mucking around with water chemistry. You don't necessarily need it. You can make great beer. Well, you can make very good beers without it. But if you start playing with water chemistry, you can turn those very good beers into great beers. And that's kind of the difference. It's like the unlocking the final key. You already understand all of your hops. You understand how to use malt, how to use yeast. You get all this stuff. You've been brewing with it for ages. You introduce salts into that mix. You can truly make something special. It just accentuates all the best qualities of your beer. Thanks for watching guys. If you do want to read more about all of this stuff, I've got a blog on theflyingwombat.com.au that gives you that um, kind of high level guide about all the world of water chemistry and brewing salts. So if you want to take your time and read through that bit by bit, jump onto the website over there. We'll link it down below and you can read through all of this stuff. In any case, thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time. And as always, brew on guys.